Dear friends, dear students, I'm doing the moderation on behalf of Chiwaka Azad Center, the Kurdish Center for um, Public Relations. And I want just shortly to introduce you a little bit to the situation which we are living now in Turkey and the Middle East. When we look two or four years back, or in the year 2014, yeah, well, in three years back, we were full of hope. We hoped that peace would come in Turkey, that democracy would develop in Turkey, that there would be a process of negotiation and solution. As you probably know, delegations from the state, from the Turkish, Turkish state, went to the island of Imrali, where Abdullah Öcalan, the chairman, Mr. Abdullah Öcalan, the chairman of the PKK, the imprisoned chairman of the PKK, is now under isolation arrest, and uh, tried to find a solution, tried to discuss a solution. This process augmented in, in the Dolmabachce protocols in February 2015, when really the solutions by Abdullah Öcalan, by the Kurdish movement, were openly discussed with the state delegation, with the Turkish state delegation. It was really a, a big moment. But nevertheless, if we are looking at this process, we have to look a little bit wider on the situation in the Middle East, on the war in Syria, on the war in Iraq. These situations produced in northern Syria the possibility to create really a model, well, of democracy, of radical democracy, or we could say grassroots democracy, of gender liberation and the cohabitants of people of many, many different ethnicities, eth ethnicities um, backgrounds, religious backgrounds, identities. And this pro 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 project was too highly influenced by the ideas of democratic confederalism and democratic autonomy mm -hmm. developed by the PKK and its chairman, Abdullah Öcalan. But I have to state, this is not a PKK project, Rojava, it's a totally independent project. Nevertheless, this project was a huge provocation, we could say, or the Turkey saw this project as a huge provocation and supported terrorist groups like Daesh, like the IS, or like Jabhat al-Nusra, against the self-administration of Rojava. This began, this process started already in 2014. And, well, if we are looking in retrospect perspective, we could say uh, this makes quite clear that the peace process, the idea of a peace process in Turkey and in northern Kurdistan wasn't quite sincere from the side of the Kurdish movement. Nevertheless, Dolmabahce process happened, but afterwards Erdogan uh, stated that these that these um, protocols weren't valid. Why did he say it? Because before, probably, he wanted to win the, uh, the, the votes of uh, the HDP and of the Kurds for, its, for his presidential system. But they said in the beginning of the year 2015, Seni Bashkan Yaptiramas, uh, we will, we won't make you uh, president. Yeah, and this was this was uh, seen as a yeah provocation for the system of Erdogan, and he tried to put the HDP, the BDP, the Kurdish parties or the multi-ethnic parties, uh, the left parties, left opposition down even before the elections. Nevertheless, the HDP won the elections. We could say, well, won the elections is a, a huge victory is to win the many, many votes, many, many in the Kurdish provinces and to come over the 10% barrier in Turkey. That's a really Im important victory, which one shouldn't underestimate. And it changed the situation in parliament. The, uh, the majority for the presidential system wasn't possible. What, have, what happened afterwards? The president of Turkey, or Erdogan, just, uh, just, uh, just stopped the negotiations on building up a coalition, hindered them, and there was no process, there was no solution. And in this time, the war in the Kurdish cities started. 
There were attacks on Kurdish cities with artillery. There were people even burned, over 100 people burned in the city of Chizre. Shirnak was, lay, was, was put to rubble. Chizre too. It was, uh, it was a situation you can't imagine how cruel. But nevertheless, while the pictures from the Kurdish cities of this region were similar to the pictures we have of Aleppo or Homs or other cities, they didn't have the reper repercussion in the, uh, in the public or in the, in the world. So we are here now to explain how this process changed, how we come to the Turkey of nowadays. We say, or our, op our opinion on this is, to say, well, um, the real, the real um, golpe, the real um, coup didn't happen on, in 2016. The coup started with Erdogan uh, not, not building up a coalition, stopping elections, and then afterward this coup attempt happened and Erdogan used it to uh, install his autocratic system which with, which, with, which with we have to live or which we have to struggle today. I give now the word to the first speaker. We will have four speakers. That's Mrs. Nursel Aydoğan. She was born in 1958 in Bursa, Turkey. She is a food en engineer. Aydoğan worked as an executive member of union syndicate KESK the year, in the years 1991 to 1999. She has also volunteered for political prisoners in Taider between 2000 and 2005. Later, she became one of the founders of the Democratic Society Party. She was elected as a parliamentarian for Diyarbakir city, the greatest Kurdish city of Turkey, in 2011. She was re-elected in 2015 for Diyarbakir as a HDP, Party of People's Democracy, parliamentarian. She was imprisoned with her other 12 parliamentarian friends on the 4th of November in 2016 after the coup of the government against HDP parliamentarians. Just after her release in April 2017, she was decided to be re-imprisoned by another court. She is currently a political refugee in Germany. I give the word now to Mrs. Nursel Aydoğan. Thank you. 